Let's listen to the first murmur. Recorded at the apex. This systolic click and late systolic murmur are typical for classic mitral valve prolapse. Although this disease was only described in the 1960s, it is the most common valvular disease in the United States. Currently, the incidence of mitral valve prolapse is estimated to be 2.4% of the population based on data from the Framingham study. Earlier estimates of 17% incidence were due to selection bias and less specific two-dimensional echocardiographic criteria. Current echo criteria include one or two mitral valve leaflets displaced at least two millimeters above the mitral annulus in the parasternal or apical long axis views. The four chamber apical view may be unreliable because of the saddle shape of the mitral annulus. Listen once again to the sound of mitral valve prolapse. Symptoms of mitral valve prolapse syndrome include atypical chest pain, dyspnea, and dizziness. However, several studies have shown no true increase in the frequency of chest pain, dyspnea, or dizziness in mitral valve prolapse patients compared to matched controls. The original description of increased symptoms probably reflects selection bias from referral centers. The click and the murmur are known to be affected by dynamic maneuvers such as squatting. Upon changing from standing to squatting, left ventricular volume increases and the click moves later in systole. With standing, left ventricular volume decreases and the click moves earlier in systole. Listen to the change in the click and the murmur with a squat maneuver. I will start in the standing position and then move to squatting and then return to standing. Squatting. Standing. In a classic study, researchers demonstrated that the click, which reflects movement of the mitral valve into the left atrium, always occurs at the same ventricular diameter no matter what the patient's position. Standing decreases left ventricular volume and causes the click to move earlier since the left ventricle reaches click volume sooner. Conversely, by increasing left ventricular volume with squatting or hand grip, we can cause the click to move later since the left ventricle takes longer to reach the click volume. In this example, I will remove the murmur to concentrate on the change in the interval between the first heart sound and the click in response to the maneuvers of standing and squatting. I will start in the standing position where the interval between S1 and the click is 140 milliseconds and then move to a squatting position where this interval is 200 milliseconds. Standing. Squatting. Standing. Now I will repeat these maneuvers with the murmur restored. Squatting. Standing. Another maneuver to demonstrate mitral valve prolapse in patients who cannot squat is hand grip. By increasing systolic blood pressure and afterload, hand grip causes an increase in left ventricular volume and causes the click to move later in systole. 
Listen to the change in the S1 click interval during a hand grip maneuver. Rest. Hand grip. Release. The overwhelming majority of patients with mitral valve prolapse have an excellent prognosis and a normal life expectancy. A minority of patients have complications of progressive mitral regurgitation, arrhythmias, endocarditis, and sudden death. The greatest risk factors for progressive mitral regurgitation leading to heart failure include male gender, elevated systolic blood pressure, and dilated left ventricle. Severe mitral regurgitation leading to heart failure can develop from progressive myxomatous degeneration or chordal rupture. Listen to the sound of severe mitral regurgitation with a third heart sound. I will begin with normal sounds and then add the third heart sound and finally the systolic murmur. Patients with mitral valve prolapse have been thought to have an increased incidence of both atrial and ventricular arrhythmias. However, data from the Framingham study have shown no significant increase in dithrhythmias between patients with and without mitral valve prolapse based on 12-lead EKG, treadmill testing, and 24-hour halter monitoring. Patients with mitral valve prolapse and mitral regurgitation do have a higher prevalence of ventricular arrhythmias, including ventricular tachycardia. Sudden death is rare in patients with mitral valve prolapse, occurring at 0.1 to 0.4 percent per year. However, this rate is similar to the risk of sudden death in the general adult population. In patients with mitral valve prolapse, the risk of sudden death is greatest in patients with complex ventricular arrhythmias on halter monitoring, prolonged QT interval, or hemodynamically significant mitral regurgitation. Listen again to the sound of significant mitral regurgitation. Patients with mitral valve prolapse and mild to moderate mitral regurgitation should have yearly echocardiograms to monitor any change in left ventricular size and function. Those with severe mitral regurgitation should be followed with stress echocardiography every 6 to 12 months. In patients requiring mitral valve surgery, 90% of such patients can have mitral valve repair with good long-term results. Listen once again to the change in the click murmur with a squat maneuver. Squatting. Standing. In summary, mitral valve prolapse is the most common valvular disease in the United States, with an incidence of 2.4% in the population. The classic click murmur complex moves later with squat maneuver and earlier with standing. Studies show that neither chest pain nor arrhythmias are more common in patients with mitral valve prolapse compared to match controls. Patients at risk for valve replacement include men, those with elevated systolic blood pressure, increased left ventricular size, and mitral regurgitation. Mitral valve repair is available for the majority of patients who need surgery. Listen once again to the classic click murmur of mitral valve prolapse. <laughs>